Okay, we are live on YouTube. Welcome to uh, this week's uh, Q&A and form checks. I'm Mick Solomons, the developer of the Starting Strength app and Strength Club, and alongside me, Starting Strength coach Alex Koseri. How's it going, everybody? Struggling with the uh, hotel internet, are we today, Alex? Yes, yeah. So unfortunately, I'm uh, I'm a resident of the the worst state of California for I think another three weeks at this point. Um, uh. So if anybody is in San Diego with access to a barbell, hit me up. I'm currently losing all of my gains in a hotel room. <laughs> I'm, I have some uh, two and a half gallon water jugs that I'm using as dumbbells for lateral raises. <laughs> And uh, I made a dip station and some. I made a dip station and some parallettes out of PVC pipe that I'm putting in the closet. So we're Excellent. trying our best out here. Nice. Can you do something with the shower curtain rod? I'm pretty sure I can do something with that, can't you? Actually, yeah, I'm not a David Carradine thing, but um, but uh, the shower curtain <laughs> rod is sturdy enough to do pull-ups off of. So I have pull-ups. You, you you attempted it. You looked at I that. Did. And said, ah, I did. I did. It's me. a. It's a. It's a Navy hotel, so I think they made it. They were just like, "Hey, we got to make this sturdy enough that just in case oh, someone yeah. needs to do PT in the room." <laughs> <laughs> was that the first thing you did when you walked in the room? Was just look at everything how you could use it as a as a. Uh, yeah. a, a workout I looked at mechanism? things to hang myself on. And then I on. <laughs> I'm like, what can I hang myself on, and what can I do dips on, basically. Uh, Cool. Yeah. And uh, we've also got Rusty from the Wichita Falls Athletic Club. G'day, Rusty. Hey, y'all. How y'all doing? Good. How's your week been? Alex, if you, it, oh, it's been all right. Alex, if you need a spotter, I can FaceTime you, man. Okay? <laughs> you know you how to tie a noose? All the, all the hotel workouts have their shirt off, so that's fine. <laughs> <laughs> All right, just uh, so quickly, we launched a uh, feature in the Starting Strength app during the week, which um, allows everyone to upload their form check videos directly from the app now. So um, I'll just, uh, let's see if we can do this. Yeah, there we go. So now in the app, you'll see a little uh, form check button there. And uh, if you click that, you'll, um, you'll be able to upload your videos directly to us and we'll form check them live on YouTube. So um, yeah. Have a have a crack at that, guys, and um, and uh, yeah, it's a good little feature. People seem to be using it, so it's uh, it's good. Um, yeah, so let's uh, let's rip into some questions, guys. Um, we had Edwin on last week, who was uh, we who was lifting with the uh, Captain America plates, I think, and we I, I took a guess that he was in Singapore, but he's actually he emailed during during the week and said he's in Taiwan, so. He wants to know, is there anyone in Taiwan who can do uh, face-to-face coaching? Um, not that I'm aware of. I think Singapore is actually the closest place he's going he's gonna to have. <clears throat> um, so I think probably he's probably limited to online coaching at this point then, I guess, because uh, no one's yeah. really traveling anywhere at the moment. Um, so yeah, so Edwin, check out. There's a starting strength coaches directory, and I think most, pretty much all coaches these days are doing online stuff. Um, Alex is doing online Next stuff. Next option, <laughs> I am doing online stuff. Next option is I will be in Japan within the next, I would say, month and a half. So I don't know. Come meet me somewhere in the in the Great Orient of Asia, and we'll we'll do some form checking. It's a different but, country, but <laughs> can you? I know, can yeah. people try? I don't think people I can think travel. I'll be, <laughs> no, I think I'll be able to. I'll have a. Um, I, I have a few other stops to go to. I have to go to Thailand at some point. I have to go to Indonesia at some point. So I'm sure I can squeeze in a few other visits is over the travel, time I'll be in Japan. Is travel, uh, can people travel at the moment? I, I don't know. What's... Um, I know Japan said in September they're going to start allowing uh, foreign travel again outside of like for government reasons. So I think September is kind of the cliff for a few countries. So hopefully, okay. hopefully in the next few months. All right. Well, um, yeah, there you go, Edwin. Get in touch with Alex and maybe you can uh, drop by and... And uh, give you a bit of coaching in person. Uh, that'd be good. Um, all right, let's rip into some form checks. Uh, so we've got, uh, we'll do it in starting at A this week, just for you guys to. Um, so we're starting with ADZ Specky, I think is his video title. Ads Specky, I think we've had him on before. Yeah, I recognize this rack setup. Yeah, the, uh, the corrugated iron wall he's got in the background there all right this is a triple i think this is a triple yeah 
sort of session. Yeah. So he said mm-hmm. um, he's lifting 75 kilograms in this session and he failed all three sets. Mm. Um, first thing I'm noticing, I think his elbows are a little bit too flared out. He needs to be leading with his elbows, keeping, keeping them slightly ahead of the bar. That means slightly towards his feet, just a little bit ahead of the bar so he can start driving that bar back as soon as he touches. If you push that bar straight up and it's, and it's got any significant weight on it, it's going to get a lot harder, a lot faster. So as soon as you touch, normally it's right below the nipples. You need to be thinking about driving that bar back to your shoulders immediately, a straight line back to your shoulders to lock out. That's the only thing that I'm really noticing. I think um, I think the strength's there. You just need to control your elbows a little bit better. Mm-hmm. Um, to start, I think if I remember correctly, his squat is tracking near either the low 300s or towards 300s. So this bench is lagging behind a little bit. I'd make sure your programming is on the up and up there. If you switch triples, it may have been too early to do that, or it's just time to move on to more uh, advanced programming altogether. Um, but otherwise, what you want to think about um, is that the whole midfoot thing that we talk about for the bench press, that midfoot position is now your shoulder. So your job when you're coming out of the bottom is to get that bar back over your shoulder as soon as possible so like rusty was saying you're flaring too early and by doing that you're putting your elbows directly under the bar and you're really not going to be able to take it backwards towards your shoulder um so think about keeping your elbows glued to your ribs and then sending the bar back to the hooks on the way up so just really over exaggerated on your warm-up sets and normally it'll correct itself by the work set it looks like he's losing a bit of tightness as he's coming down as well um in Mm -hmm. humble opinion anyway all right there you go uh Adam, thanks a lot. Send us another video. Um, next up, we have Azim85, who I believe we have had on for about the last five weeks in a row. Yeah, he's a stable. It's him and Melanie. Mm-hmm. <laughs> we told him to put some weight on the bar, which he has done. <laughs> okay, we're on the press. <laughs> I hope this is a press. Oh, for a moment there, I thought he was going for a squat. <laughs> I, I, thought, I thought he was going for a squat as well. Yeah, there, all right. Interesting. It's quite the setup. Um, yeah, so keep putting some weight on the bar. This is still behaving like an empty bar for you, and you're getting away with pressing with a very extended or incorrect wrist position. I think Phil Meggers just put out a really good video for it. I think Rusty would know the title better than I would um, about your wrist position in the press and then how you know your wrist needs to be slightly extended. Let's see if I get my hand to show up here, but not... Uh, turned all the way backwards. So if you notice that your wrist is like this, if it's making that right angle, it's gone too far. Um, Think about squeezing the bar and then aiming your knuckles at the ceiling, um, and then you can add 20 pounds to this and keep going. I think you added, is that just a five on each side? So this is 55 pounds. Um, Try something like 75, 85, um, and you'll notice, you'll start to notice the efficiencies between keeping your wrist bent and keeping your wrist straight. Yeah. Um, I think that is the name of it, wrist positions in the press, or wrist position in the press. Um, mm-hmm. Nick D also has a video on it. Rip also has a video on it. There's a bunch of videos on our, um, on the starting strength YouTube about it. Um, mm-hmm. but, uh, yeah, um, Alex had everything on the head on that. Um, that wrist position needs to be fixed and you need to put some weight on that bar for, um, effective coaching. Um, it's really hard to coach very lightweight because generally you can just manhandle that weight however you want. So get a little bit of weight on that bar. Let us see a little bit of resistance and then, um, we could probably help you out a little bit better. Mm-hmm. I think that's the most common video on the Starting Strength YouTube channel mm-hmm. is that there yeah. are now like <laughs> five iterations of how to hold your hands <laughs> during the press. So hopefully they'll keep coming out with one well, every three you know, to four the, months. Yeah, the funny thing is is, is that since I started working um, at the gym, I've noticed like more coaches even getting that wrong. You know, they're um, they're doing weird things with their hands, like putting the web of their ha- hands into the bar like this. As a proper setup, I've seen that. Um, I've seen a lot of different kinds of, you know, coaches messing up the actual hand setup. That's why it's being touched on so many times because it's being coached wrong. Mm-hmm. So, um, you know, and the book lays it out very thoroughly. We've got videos that lay it out very thoroughly. I mean, um, shouldn't be a problem that is happening right now. It will forever be a problem. It will forever <laughs> be a problem. One hundred percent right. <laughs> uh, so we have a comment from our old mate Travis Reed. Um, <laughs> Yeah, Travis said, good morning, fellas. Well, good morning, Mick, anyway. Okay, all right. <laughs> Thanks, Travis. There you go. Hope you, guys had enjo- <laughs> Hope you guys had an enjoyable weekend. Then he said, I can't even go further than five kilometers from my house at the moment, so a trip to Japan sounds bloody fantastic. 
I'm guessing uh, <laughs> Travis is in Melbourne, Australia, which has got the toughest coronavirus <laughs> restrictions in the world. <laughs> yeah, Mick, I've been, I don't want to get too political, but I did see a video of um, some cops arresting a girl for not wearing a mask. It doesn't surprise me. It doesn't surprise me, Melbourne. <laughs> Melbourne is the California of Australia, so uh, mm. well, the rest of Australia well, isn't too California far behind. Of Australia. Yeah. <laughs> in terms Jake, of, there's always room in Texas for you, man. <laughs> uh, we're okay up here at the moment, but um, yeah, I think there. I think it's about to happen again. But anyway, thanks a lot, Travis. Oh, he said mm. another comment. I think the video is called "Fix Your Wrists and Grip in the Press with Phil Meggers." So there you go. Yeah, there we go. There you go. All right. Back to the videos. Form checks. Who's up next? We've got Caffeine Kilo. I think his guy's name's Tyler. All right. Um, first thing um, first thing first is the, the knees. You're letting your knees go far, forward way too much, which is causing you to get on your toes. So all that mass is going forward whenever you start your ascent in the squat. So you got to stop your knees towards your toes. Um you got to stop your knees, your toes, get your hips back, feel the stretch in your hamstring. Uh, make sure that bar stays over in the midfoot the whole time. If it, if it juts forward, it's going to pull you forward. You're going to start putting all that pressure on your toes. So you need to control your knees. Um, if you have to use the tubo, um, that'll teach you when to stop your knees. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I would start by increasing your toe angle. Your toe angle is a little bit shallow, so they're basically pointed straight forward right now. Um, if you take an extra, I think your walkout's a little bit too short, by the way, so you may end up clanking your plates on something. Um, but uh, what you want to think about is aiming your toes out at those up uprights about like a little bit more than 30 degrees. Um, that shorter foot from the side is going to help you control your knee position, so make the toe angle more severe. Um, and, you know, if you don't have someone there to like put the tubo, you know, do, doing that if you're actively squatting, um, just think about picking your big toe up in your shoe. If you can get all the way down to the bottom of the squat without having your big toe touch the ground, you are successfully on your heels. You will not want to do that during a work set, but, you know, play around with it with 135 to see how it feels, so. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, here we go. Uh, Caffeine Kilo. He's got like a rowing machine, fancy rowing machine in the background there, isn't he? Is that what that is? <laughs> I, think it's a, I think it's a rowing machine. Oh, that, yeah, that's one of the clear ones where you can see the water. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I, keep having this, yeah. I keep having this ongoing debate with a guy on the internet. <laughs> <laughs> Here's your first problem. Yeah, I know. It, it is sounds great. It is my fault. It's it's 100 my fault. But uh, we keep having this debate every time it comes up. Someone asks something about exercise and fitness or whatever, and I say just you know deadlift and squat. And then he always comes in with, oh, rowing's rowing's so much more effective um, than mm -hmm. than weightlifting. And we just we just have this yeah. forever debate going on. So, uh, it's not worth All you got to do, Mick, is just say, man, you're so right, and just move on. With <laughs> I, I this man is I, incredibly right. <laughs> I, I think one of, the, one of the first people I coached the deadlift, um, he was a rower. He never really did anything with a barbell, though. Um, so he rode recreationally in college. The first time I had him deadlift, it was perfect. And he said, oh, this is a rowing stroke. <laughs> I can see how this would be helpful. <laughs> and I was like, yeah, man, that's pretty crazy. Yeah. Uh, really look good. Uh, all right, so a couple more comments. The Devil Guy zero four. Appreciate all the feedback you guys have given. No worries, mate. Absolutely, Devil Guy. Uh, Travis left another comment. Yes, he's in Melbourne, and sorry, fellas, he realised it was evening in the states. No disrespect to Rusty and Alex. Oh. <laughs> Such a nice guy, Travis. I don't take anything to offence, honestly. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you got to get that printed on a shirt, though. Melbourne, the California of Australia. Yeah, I think it's most wordy, of the people down there are proud sticker, of that. Maybe. Of the bump, yeah. So you'll get both markets. You will get the people who hate Melbourne and the people who are up their butt about it. What's that one they have down there? The uh, in California, the Republic of California with the bear. What's what's that uh -huh. one? Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. get a few. It of looks those. deceivingly cool. Yes. Yeah, yeah, it does. You think, oh, yeah. Republic of California? Hell, yeah. there's nothing Republic about it. <laughs> 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 All right, let's keep it. Let's keep the show on the road. We're going off the tracks here a bit. <laughs> uh, we got uh, Daigle. His username on the app: D D A E G L E. His squat video. <clears throat> All right. Um, so to start off, um, you need to control your descent. Um, that very first rep, man, you just kind of flew down there, and that's what got you on your toes real hard. 
Um, I would get your knees out a little bit harder and sit back. You need to bend over more than you want to to drive your hips, right? So at the very beginning of the squat, your knees go forward. They stop. Keep bringing your hips back. Bend over more than you want to. Point your chest to the ground, and that will allow you to drive your hips out of the bottom a little bit better. Um, they got that first rep was the, to me was the roughest. Everything kind of smoothed out a little bit, but you're still um, dropping your hips too much and getting them forward in the bottom. So keep them back in the bottom. Yeah, I think you're on soft like Skechers moon shoes yeah. for yeah, these, which is making it sure. like very complicated because that's where most of your balance problems are coming from. I feel like <clears> right now. Um, but otherwise, you're just not really getting tight. So before each breath, take like the largest breath that you can into your chest and clamp down on it. Uh, as the rep goes on, think about clamping down on it harder and harder and harder. You'll get a little break in between reps. So just wait for that. Um, but I think if you can get tighter, force that brace to happen um, and then get rid of the uh, the moon shoes. And then that should solve most of these problems. Like Rusty said, like uh, a lot of things self-corrected by the time you got to rep five. So rep five. We'll see a little bit of a pause and then a clear hip drive out of the bottom. Try and replicate that. Um, and my spidey senses are telling me that you probably are looking up when you're coming out of the bottom, as in your eyes are probably shooting up. I don't think your head's changing position too much, but do keep track of that. Yeah, so this guy said uh, that this is his four weeks on the program and he's up to 225 by five. So good. I guess, guessing he must have taken a few steps mm -hmm. up, but anyway. Nice, yeah, yeah. Good. pretty good. Cool. All right, thanks, David. Uh, so we've got Edwin next, Edwin S. from last week. Oh, actually, sorry, oh, I skipped Zach. Dr. Zach. Yeah, sorry, Dr. Zach. Okay. Sorry, I did skip one. Yep. Oh, he's still rocking those trendy shoes, isn't he? Mm hmm. Mm -hmm. He's... Dr. Zach, the chiropractor. A man committed to fashion. <laughs> <laughs> These look all right. Yeah, I'm still in the setup, so if you're if you're ahead, okay. go for it. Yeah, um, these look, these don't look too bad, um, Doctor Zach. Um, I think you're you're starting with your hips a little bit too aggressively. Um, think about um, dropping your nuts straight to the ground, so your hips and your knees should break at the same time. Um, it looks to me that you're kind of jutting your butt back, and then your knees are going. So smooth that out. Um, you might, I don't, I don't know, Alex, if you think that he should bring his stance in just a tad bit. It, to me, it seems like he's a little bit wide. I mean, he seems like a big guy. But no, I think, I, I think just... the, I think the stance is fine. And, you know, he has the, the, the mobility air quotes to get to that depth just fine and still keep the hamstrings yeah. tight. Um, the, I'd say the big thing that I am noticing is that as we watch your upper back, uh, Dr. Zach, um, as you're pitching down about, I would say, 30, 40% of the way into the descent, you're getting more drastic with the lean. You're leaning over at your sternum and then rounding the whole upper back. Um, okay. So think about aiming your sternum at the wall in front of you the entire time. So if someone, if you're at the bottom of the squat and you're sitting there, someone standing in front of you should be able to see your whole sternum. Um, your head should still be tilted down. Um, but otherwise, I think these are these are pretty solid. They are they are very dramatic, but I think that would mm -hmm. you know self correct by the time it gets like actually heavy for you. Yep. Pretty princess sternum. There's a new one. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> Show the whole sternum. <laughs> uh, cool. Thanks, Dr. Zach. Got another comment from uh, from David, who was from before. He said, thanks, Jan. Scott, shoes coming. Lifting with new balance running shoes right now. Ah, uh -huh, yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Good. They're the most fashionable shoe, but not very good for deadlifting. No. Or for squatting, excuse me. They're good for barbecuing, too. <laughs> you gotta yeah. wear high socks though all right that's interesting we've got a uh another comment from Ahmed Sheik Ahmed hello folks all right hello Ahmed. hello how's it going man I'm wondering if he's wanting to like he's send us some money to our bank account or something is this where this is going <laughs> <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> Uh, I just need to give him my bank account number. Yeah, I think that's pretty much all you got to do, mate. <laughs> uh, all right, we have uh, Edwin next from last week. Whoops, I just messed that up. Now let's get it back. There we go. All right, there we go. We're good now. Right, Did he say how heavy this is? Uh, yes. Uh, well, this is his deadlift video, so... Uh, no, he, um, no, okay. he, well, he didn't mention, it, it is, it is, it is a decent, because he pounds. said, yeah, he said he's, um, the squat he shed last week was 335 by five. 
And okay. Uh, okay. he thought that someone mentioned that if his form was correct, that he should be able to put 100 pounds on his squat. <laughs> Is that really true? <laughs> it's feeling pretty hard we, now. We, yeah. No, we, we mm-hmm. thought that was a lot lighter than what it, <laughs> what it was. Mm-hmm. That's good news. I think I'd, I think I'd still say, I'd, I'd say 40. I think yeah. my, my guess last week was 50. I think I'll bump that down to 40 conservatively. <laughs> <laughs> I'm guessing this is probably 360, 375. Okay, somewhere between 300 to 500 pounds. Yep. <laughs> um, yeah, I I like these. These were just heavy, slow deadlifts. They came off the floor at midfoot. Um, you're seeing like a little bit of a hitching pattern on some reps, but it's not anything that I would be, you know, particularly picky about. Um, I would hey. increase the speed that you're taking in between reps. Um, so you are waiting for a little bit longer than I think that you have to at the bottom. So that will probably make things feel harder than it actually is. So if you're noticing that your deadlifts have been slowing down week over week over week, um, you know, we'll check your programming first, but if you don't think it's that stop taking four seconds in between every rep. So, yeah, um, I, that's what I tell everybody. Take as much time as you need to get a correct setup, but don't waste time. Hurry up and mm-hmm. set up and pull the weight because, just, just holding on the bar in that position will wear you out without doing anything. So you want to get into the reps. Um, Alex, I, um, go ahead and with me, I want you to look at the very beginning of a lot of these deadlifts. I feel like he's not starting midfoot because if you watch right as soon as it breaks off the floor, that bar pulls back. I think his hips are a little bit too low and he needs to get them a little bit higher because his hips are shooting up before the weight starts moving. Um, I don't know if you're seeing that. Um, I am um, blind so right now. I- no, no, no. You're you're right in seeing that, but it's kind of this thing between like starting the pull and then actually pulling. He's getting tight to the bar, and as that's happening, his hips are moving up and the bar is moving back about an inch. Um, yeah. But it's happening every rep. Cons- yeah, yeah, it's happening every rep consistently enough. Um, where if that's a like a, if that's a habit that you've developed and it's one of the only ways that you'll like get tight to the bar. Uh, fix it during your warm-ups, but it, that's one of those things that takes a very significant period of time for people to mentally change. That like you have to get tight with the hips high. Um, but I think the, I would say like the big uh, reason why we really enforce that is because you'll see people try to pull the bar off the ground when it's actually forward of midfoot, and it just will not work. Other people will pull the bar back and into them as they're pulling. And it will come off the ground at midfoot. They'll just waste basically a quarter second. Um, so, world, it's not super efficient, but it's still coming off the ground midfoot, which is why I use that yeah. that language in the first one. Um, but that yeah. takes that takes a long time and a lot of in person coaching to work through. Yeah, yeah I think uh, I think if if you just work on keeping your hips a little bit higher um, in your setup, that bar will be in the right, right spot. So uh, like Alex said, um, during your warm up sets, work on keeping your hips a little bit higher. Um, do the five step setup. Don't change anything about that five steps and uh, you should be all right. Mm-hmm. Now you will see some crazy people try to like initiate the pull with the bar, not even in contact with their shins. Mm-hmm. It's, yeah. it's very weird to see. Yeah. All right. Uh, thanks Edwin. Appreciate the video. Um, got a couple more comments. Ahmed, Sheik Ahmed, thank you guys for this. Maybe one day, I think he's referring to the sending us some money. There we go. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's, it's on. It's well, on, send baby. some videos first, man. See, an actual Sheik is what I want to know. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah. <laughs> if so, I will give him a bank account number. <laughs> like the guy from the WWE. What was his name? Um, what was oh, his the name? Iron Sheik. Yeah. yeah. You know, the funny thing is, the funny thing is, is he lives rather close to me. He lives just a really? few cities away from me, yeah. yeah. Doesn't um, Wichita Falls place. have the world-famous uh, wrestle, professional wrestling museum? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah next yeah. next door to the world's uh, smallest skyscraper? That is correct. That Man, is correct. I'm, I'm on it. Right, right around the block. Man, <laughs> I missed a lot when I was in Wichita Falls. I got to go back there. I only <laughs> yeah. went to Raising Cane's Chicken, and that was great. That was the only <laughs> thing I went to outside of the gym. My favorite memory from Wichita Falls was going to the, uh, the park, the actual Lake Wichita, <laughs> which is not as scenic as I thought it would have been. <laughs> and uh, walk, just going for a walk, and a guy came running around the corner in a full, like, tuxedo suit, just sprinting. Oh, yeah. Just sprinting. <laughs> in it. And I just thought, whatever this is, I don't want to be part of this. <laughs> and he got to the... He's probably late for a wedding. <laughs> <laughs> he got to the lake, stripped off naked, and just dive-bombed in. 
Oh, I remember this story. Yeah, now. and yeah. I just uh, I turned around and walked back to my car and I'm like, oh, whatever that is, that's just, um, I don't oh, want to be involved that, in that. That is a hell of a drug, yeah, man. I think, that I think that a hell of a drug. Now I know why you all need guns out there. It's just like, you got to be prepared for that sort of stuff when a dude's running. It's the Wild life. West, man. The <laughs> you Wild stay West. strapped at all times, yeah. man. A <laughs> uh, couple more comments. Uh, Travis Reed was the doc sneaking a couple of looks into the mirrors at the bottom of his squat. Uh, okay. Um, Everyone, everyone. So suspicion confirmed. Yes. Every, everyone, <laughs> senses were... everyone sneaks a peek, Travis. It's just mm-hmm. it happens. Yeah. Uh, I got called out at that seminar almost every time. In the in the toilets or at uh, in the. You no, know, no. Uh, during when during my squats, oh, right. I would like peek up for a fraction of a second, and then I remember that Chase and then some other some some other uh, old, older woman was standing across the room, and they like on. pointed at me, and they were just like eyes down, keep it down. You know, Alex, it does not surprise me one mm-hmm. bit that you look at yourself in the mirror when you lift. <laughs> See, what actually, I was I was looking at the people, so it was whenever Rip was coaching me and some of the other the staffs were coaching me, and I was looking at them to see what their expressions were. Oh. <laughs> I, was, I was just like, do they hate me? Oh, God. <laughs> yeah, they, they hate you. Uh-huh. We, we talked if about it afterwards. If you have to ask the question, the answer is yes. <laughs> yes. If you have to ask, it is, it is yes. Uh, so uh, Ahmed, Sheik Ahmed uh, asks, how do you plan for failed hip drive in the squat? And he said he sent a workout set from the app. How do you plan for failed hip drive? In the squat, for the squat. I don't really understand well, the question. Um, I, I'm yeah, sure it'll I mean, be in the videos, but I, I think he's talking about, you know, if you lead with your chest, how to recover it. Um, <laughs> good luck. <laughs> yeah, just keep just keep driving. If you are if you're patient enough and you're kind of athletic enough to open up your knee angle and then keep shoving the hips up through the air, you'll get to the point where the leverages are correct enough that you can drive through the squat. Um, but if you're at the bottom, what you'll see is the hips will sink too low, the knees will come too far forward, you'll be stuck driving your chest mm-hmm. into it. You just have to grind like hell. You will return to the correct position and then you'll start. It's not unlike. Um, or you'll start moving. It's not unlike if you try to pull a deadlift off with your hips too low, you can fight it with everything you're worth. The hips will rise into the correct position and then it will start moving. Um, it's not unlike that. So if you, if your chest rockets up before everything else does, just stick with it and then you'll eventually get to the correct position. It's just very inefficient. So, yeah, what, what I notice is whenever, um, people tend to raise their chest is because their chest is collapsing. A lot of times if they start to lose that thoracic exp- extension, then for whatever reason, they start driving their chest up thinking that they can get that back in the squat. So, um, I mean, we'll, we'll look for it if it's in his video. Um, mm-hmm. Yeah, but, let us know your um, your username, Ahmed, and I'll, I'll let you know if you're on today or because uh, we've got a lot of videos. We only got about 40 submissions in the last couple of days, so we're not going to be able to get through all of them today. But um, yeah. if you let us know, I'll, I'll let you know when you're going to be on. Um, all right, let's keep cracking on. Um, who's up next? Grace. Grace. Grace Mikey. I'm pretty sure we have a comment here as well for Grace. Uh, he said he's got a bad habit of wanting to see his form as he's performing the squat. Oh, that's just what we talked about. Um, mm-hmm. I keep bringing my head up. I also get elbow pain and my left shoulder gets pushed forward. Yeah, you're getting elbow pain because of the way you're holding the bar, man. You're... Um You've got that that bend in your wrist uh, that we were talking about during the press. Um, it's also a very bad thing to have in the squat because you end up just relying on your arms to hold that bar instead of your back. You need to learn how to get your hand more over the bar and bring your elbows up and in just a little bit tighter and let your back take the weight, not your arms. If your back is taking the weight, then that will leave that pressure off of your elbows. Um See, on these um, these squats really don't look too bad, if you ask me. Um, I think you could sit back a little bit harder, um, but other than that, because I, I think I can't tell, but I think your foot's coming up just a little bit, your heel, on mm-hmm. some of these. Yeah, um, I think so that, so he's he's losing the upper back position enough that rep five was was a little bit high just because you yeah. know you just can't handle it. If you if you're noticing that uh, your upper back position is uh, getting too soft, no matter what, by the end of the set. Fix it the best that you can technically if you can't program around it. So if you're like, okay, I got three really good reps in me with upper back extension, reps four and five, I always collapse. Just do more triples, you know. Um, uh, try to try to figure out a way to solve that problem if you can't 
get it coached through. Um, but otherwise, yeah, Rusty was totally correct. You may need to widen up your grip for a little bit, get the wrist straight, squeeze the chest up. Um, what I like to say for people like this is, is you're so used to uh, cranking your elbows up to take weight in the bar. Um, mm -hmm. Think about keeping your fingers straight and extended like this and just have them clasp onto the bar and just try and pick it up with really only your back. So if you can like one eighth or one sixteenth of a squat without actually clasping your hands onto it, just having the bar resting on your back, then you'll know that you're taking the load through your through your shoulders rather than holding it into your wrists. Um, so give that drill a try, see if you can manage to get it on your shoulders rather than in your hands. Um, and then, you know, hopefully it'll, hopefully it'll correct itself. Yep. And um, uh, one thing that I do notice um, on me personally, whenever I'm hitting very heavy squats, if I'm not really focused on keeping my back as hard and tight as possible, um, if any kind of softness enters in whenever I'm driving that bar up, it makes that weight feel twice as heavy. So if you keep your back solid and keep that bar on the back and not out and not in your hands, um, that weight will probably feel a whole lot better in keeping your hips back too. Yeah. That is one thing that I'll ask, even if I, even if they clearly don't squat in the starting strength style of squatting, if it's high bar or just a standard like West Side PL squat, I'll ask any advanced squatter that I'll see kind of what the top thing they're thinking about is. Almost every single one of them has always said upper back tightness. They're thinking yeah. about yeah. keeping their shoulders pinned together and up and into the bar, and the rest of it mm -hmm. kind of organizes around itself. Yeah, yeah. I completely agree with that. Have you guys ever used the uh, tried getting people to put their pinky underneath the bar to help them get their wrist straight? Yes. Mm -hmm. I've never, I've never personally used that. I, um, I really don't have too many people that have um, a really bad problem with it. Um, some of my kids can get that way, but a lot of that's just because they're they're skinny and they don't have enough shelf to hold that bar up. <laughs> so you just kind of have to just they're do what you pounds. can. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I mean, mm -hmm. you know, and even even the bigger kids, even the bigger kids, they're they're bat, they're so round in their back, and they just don't have a lot of musculature just because they haven't been able to develop those muscles yet because they don't have the hormones. Um, you, you kind of have to make concessions in some spots. Um, but, um, generally with all my adults, I really haven't had too much of a problem with my adults trying to hold a bar in their, um, in their hand. Mm -hmm. so. Yeah. So if you're, if you want to look that up, if anybody's interested, it's called talon grip. So it sounds a lot cooler than it actually is. <laughs> and there are variations where it's, you know, it's in between the pinky and then, you know, in between, uh, the middle finger and the ring finger. Um, I've used it for people who are kind of like nursing a shoulder tendinopathy. If you need to get your shoulder a little bit more, uh, a little bit more depressed and your elbow farther under the bar, you can hold that weight. Uh, in a little bit of an easier spot. But sometimes it will be asymmetrical. Sometimes I'll have it be on both sides. Um, but it's not really a go-to. Uh, the only time I've had it be a go-to is whenever, you know, we, we've been, like, slowly grading someone off from a safety bar to a high bar to a low bar. And sometimes you have to make that concession. Um, but, you know. Yep. All right. Uh, thanks very much, Grace Mikey. <clears throat> Next video is uh, Joachim Rabe. I think it's Rabe. Um it's very cool the, name. It's one of those weird bees from Germany that the last letter of his surname. <laughs> it could it's be Wakim Rape for all I know. So uh, <laughs> let's hope not, though. It's a big old squat. Yeah, yeah he's a strong fellow, this guy. He sent me his deadlift video as well today, which we're going to do probably you know, two weeks later, and it's, uh, it's a decent weight on the bar. You know, um, <clears throat> I'm not seeing too, too much terribly wrong with this. Um, your knees are kind of getting a little wild. You're kind of pushing them out too far and they kind of swing back in. Just think about shoving them towards your toes and stopping them. Um, that's one thing that I'm noticing. Um, you're looking straight down. Get your, get your eye gaze out a little bit more. That will help keep your back from over rounding too much. You're dropping your elbows too. So keep your elbows in the same position. Keep them back and down nice and tight like you're trying to touch them together. Get your head up just a little bit more. Don't look straight down on your feet because that will round your upper back. And um, control your knees a little bit better. I know that sounds like a whole lot of stuff, but in in the grand scheme of things, these aren't really that all that bad. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. So I think the I think I would increase your toe angle to match it. So if you're noticing that your knees are going outside of your toes on the descent, just put your toes there. So it's not another thing you have to worry about. Um, I would increase your toe angle a little bit. That probably would end up being about half an inch on each side or however many magical centimeters that would be. Um, the next thing is that if you just kind of like pause the frame as you're unracking the bar, 
that's a great upper back position. Your head is back mm-hmm. over your shoulder, your chest is up, your elbows are down. If you look at that relationship with where your elbows are, your upper arms are, you know, in relationship to your chest, and then pause it at the bottom of one of the later reps, you're almost pulling your elbows completely under the bar, almost in front of you at that point. Um, yep. So you are making your head completely disappear from the back. So think about pulling your head back over your shoulders. Um, and then again, like we said for one of the earlier ones, if someone's standing in front of you during that squat, they should be able to see the bottom of your sternum the entire time. So you need to squeeze that up. And at the same time, like Rusty was saying, think about pulling the elbows down. Um, but otherwise, these are these are heavy and you're clearly good at what you're doing now. So implement these changes slowly. Don't expect to completely change your upper back position <clears> in one <throat> workout and have it be stronger. Um, but it will it will edge out slowly over time. So yeah, oh, yeah. Upper just, back tightness, man. I just freeze framed it exactly at the points where you were talking about Alex, as you were saying it. It was just <laughs> it was a work of art. I just want to let you guys know that. Um, <laughs> an editing masterpiece. <laughs> yeah, but it, it, the upper back does um, tend to start falling apart as soon as you start looking straight down. So mm-hmm. keep your head up. Yep. All right, Joaquin, thanks a lot for that. Got com- We've got a lot of comments today. This is great. This is great. Um, Crown of Iron is this guy's name. He That's said uh, it's a metal thing or is it a barbell thing or is it a bit of both? It's, it's a bit of both, metal. Okay, yeah. he, said, hey, go- <laughs> he said, hey, guys, I'm doing the program Submitted a form check, but I'm starting Masters Australian Rules Football next year for over 40s. Was wondering what would be a good intermediate program for that. Interesting. I wonder how frequent that is. That's a you. If he's in Melbourne, he's not going to be playing anything. I'll tell you that much right now. (laughs) (laughs) You know, here's the thing. Just stick with the program. Um, You know, if if you're, did he say if he was on the LP right now? Uh, Yeah, I think he's on the LP. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. Yeah, if you're on. If you're on the LP, just keep driving it. Um, you know, um, just train. You're gonna have to train around your training, <laughs> if that makes sense. Um, just don't change anything and uh, do what you can. Get stronger. Run your LP. Um, you know, Rip. Rip talks about this a lot about you know training for sports and getting as strong as you can for sports. You know, take your time. Get your squat up 200 pounds more than what you're doing now, and you're gonna be that much better when you do decide to play that sport and that much more. Um, um, injury resistant. So, um, you know, I wouldn't change anything. If you're my client, you told me that you're getting into sports. Um, I, I would just be like, okay, we're still going to train normal. I have a, I have a few, I'm by a few, I mean many more obnoxious notes to add to this. Um, <laughs> so if you are coming in to a practice regimen with people who they are assuming have been either playing the sport in the off season or have been running a lot in the off season, Um, the volume demand of activity that they're going to have you do is probably significantly higher than what you're used to doing. Um, So if basically everybody else on that football team has been running 10 miles a week and you haven't, and they're like, all right, everybody, day one practice, we're going to run three miles as a warm up. You need to be in a good communication rapport with your coach so that you can say like, hey, this is the baseline I'm starting from. I'm going to program this and LP this just like I would with anything else. So you need to titrate that running volume in and that practicing volume in. So, you know, if you're going from zero practices a week to four practices a week and still lifting, um, you're going to dig. It's very possible you, you'll dig too big of a fatigue hole and you'll end up getting injured just because of that mismanagement. Um, so grade that in responsibly. Be smart about it. Don't just, you know, don't be a hero. Um, but uh, other than that, I would say uh, don't sabotage yourself with attempting to get another five pounds on your squat if you have a competitive event. So, you know, so if LP is Monday, Wednesday, Friday for you, and you have a game every Saturday, maybe just take that Friday light. You know, you should be working out for many, many years on end. Um, So it's not something where you need to rush for a weight increase whenever you are juggling or you're spinning two plates now. So mm -hmm. be patient about it. Be in good communication with your coach. And then if your coach tells you to stop lifting, find a different coach. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah, I think I was um, going under the assumption that he's already been training a little bit for it. Um, you know, not a lot of people get into uh, football, um, football. You know, in, their, in, in their in their forties um, without having to have a uh, history behind it. Mm-hmm. Some people do, I guess, but um, yeah. And I mean, a lot of people they'll end up, you know, they'll hear the don't do don't have any distractions during your LP, which ninety nine yeah. out of a hundred times is the correct advice. And then yeah. he may have ditched running for two months completely, and yeah. then may have to yeah. start running five times a week. So. Yeah. You know, yeah. Be careful about it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. The great thing about cardio, though, is you get it back quick whenever you start start going again. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think the I don't know when the football season starts here, but I'm guessing it's probably 
uh, around April. They don't play it through the summer just because people would die. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so uh, <laughs> it's a million degrees. Yeah, and you know, I mean, these guys like the professional Australian footballers, they run 14, 15 k's a game, as well as getting tackled and smashed. So uh, yeah. Anyway, um, thanks for that. Thanks for the question, Paul. I think we've got his video next week as well. Chris Capella said thanks. He'll be sure to tune in again. No worries, Chris. Here we go. Um, Ahmed Sheik Ahmed, can you clarify what it means to send the hips back when you start the squat? Um, it means when your knees stop around your toes, you send your hips to the wall behind you, which means you're going to bend over a little bit more than you want to. Okay. So your knees got to stop. Your hips have to go back. That will counterbalance you and you can keep that bar over your midfoot the entire time. And with your hips back in the bottom and your hamstrings tight will allow you to get maybe a little bit of bounce in the bottom and you can drive your hips straight up. Mm Mm-hmm. Yeah, Ahmed. So when we're saying back, we mean in relationship to the middle of the foot. So if you're watching someone squat from the side, there's going to be this line that's, you know, in between their toe and in between their heel right in the middle. And that's ideally where the barbell wants to hang out at. So when we're saying sending the hips back, we mean in relationship to that midfoot. Um, So I know I think I know that sometimes that sort of like sending the hips back can kind of be an interesting thing language wise. Um, But we're meaning that backwards or away from the middle of the foot when viewed from the side. Okay. <clears throat> there you go, Ahmed. Hope that answered your question. Uh, let's get back to the, back to the videos. Jordan Froughton, our old buddy. The man. Uh, our old strong friend, Jordan. Putting us all to shame with his massive deadlifts. <laughs> well, me. Putting me to shame, anyway. <laughs> <Where are> you <laughs> guys? <laughs> But I just put me to shame too. He's a he's a big strong guy. This is a pretty pixely video for me. How many plates are on the bar here? You think is that is that is that four or five? Uh, my my vision is too blurry. I can't tell. I can't count it. Yeah, the video the video <laughs> is not great. I think it's I think it's five. But yeah. All right. Oh no, okay, it's so it's four and a four and a twenty. I think. It's four fifty five. All yeah. right. Yeah, Rep Two is my favorite. Really like Rep Two a lot. Yeah, yeah. I, I think I think both of these are solid as hell. Honestly, if um, I was coaching in person, I really wouldn't have anything negative to say about it. Maybe, maybe think about um, extending your back a little bit harder. It seemed like you kind of really rushed into that second rep, um, but it looked good. Um, if you can get a little bit tighter, get a little bit tighter. Um, other than that, mm-hmm. I think this is pretty damn good. Yeah, you're just too powerful, Jordan. It's a it's a horrible <laughs> place. It's a horrible place to be. Interested as to why you're doing doubles. I'm not sure if you're if you're rotating an intensity every day right now. If you're doing if you're doing a block, um, but uh, I'm not I'm, I'm not sure if you think that this is a very high intensity level for you or not. But these didn't stick off the ground at all. So if you think this is yeah. like a near limit double for you, you're wrong. You have like another 25 pounds in you, I think, before this would start really sticking to the floor. Mm-hmm. I agree. Mm-hmm. You need to be going up in that weight. Mm-hmm. Do you think a slack no, is a? Uh... Oh, sorry. Go ahead. He could Russell. be doing something like the five by two or something ridiculous like that. Which, <laughs> in that case, then just heavy doubles set. practice, man. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, but um, I think I think he's look good. He's got mm-hmm. groupies as well now. He's uh, he's laying oh, in the camping chair in the background, just miring. Ah, uh, I see. Yeah, yeah, I see her now. Yeah. She's yeah. like, he's resting 15 minutes in between sets, so I need to bring a large <laughs> chair now. <laughs> you know that that's how a powerlifter should be should be uh, resting. Yeah, uh, loading and unloading the bar takes an hour. Yeah, yeah. Because you got to rest in between plates. <laughs> uh, thanks, Jordan. Uh, who we got next? Uh, Lee. Lee Squat. All right, Lee. Oh, there's going to be a fair bit of discussion on this one. Well, first off, I'm glad Lee's lifting because he needs to put some weight on his body, of course. Um, I guess I'm um, a little bit partial to uh, the skinny guys because naturally I am a very skinny person. Um, <laughs> I'm laughing because I, I remember you the first time I came to Wichita Falls. You were, you yeah, were, was a lot I think the word I used to describe you was a twink. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <That's twinky. laughs> I was a good 30, 40 pounds lighter. I, I'm if, pretty sure. If anyone wants to see what Rusty used to look like, go to the app. Go to uh, videos <laughs> and click power clean, and that's Rusty. Am I from, still on there? You're still on there. We're, we are replacing it soon, there. but uh, limited okay. time only. See Rusty's twink All video. Right. <laughs> you got to archive that, man. 
Yeah, don't get that away. Yeah. Um, maybe, maybe maybe we should put that on here sometime and not tell anybody. <laughs> yeah, make that your background. Your yeah, background. there you go. <laughs> yeah. I think I can actually bring it up. Uh, we might we might actually do that. <laughs> All right, Lee. We'll talk about your squat. Um, yeah. But uh, so first things first. Let's move those let's move those hooks down. I don't know if you're working out with someone else, so you're keeping it a little bit higher than you have to. Um, but what you're aiming for is if you are standing up straight and walking into the bar mid sternum, slightly above the mid sternum is fine. Just think two through two and a half inches below your collarbone. That way you can get into the bar. You'll have to do a little bit of a squat, but it's a lot easier than having to tiptoe up and about it. Um, we, uh, the next thing is I was widening the stance up and I think your toes are actually still on that raised either foam mat or horse stall mat or what have you. So make sure you're clearing that backwards entirely. Um, and then from there, I would, I would widen the stance up like an inch and a half, two inches, and then just eat food. Eat food, do chin-ups, try your best. Yeah, you're, you're, whenever you uh, widen your stance, you're, you're going to have to also push your knees out harder because uh, it looks like your knees are kind of jutting straight forward. Um, but uh, everything else Alex said is um, solid. Um, and yeah, eat some food, man. You're going to have to gain some weight to get uh, weight on that bar. And, uh, <clears throat> trust me, I feel your plight. Um, like I said, I'm, I'm naturally a really, really skinny guy. So, uh, so just eat a lot of food, eat your protein, um, get a good shake in you before you go to bed, um, gain some weight, keep lifting heavy, keep putting weight on that bar. Mm -hmm. Yep. Okay. Good stuff. Thanks very much, Lee. Uh, we have Paul 75 up next. Is he 75 years old? <laughs> I haven't seen the video yet. Uh, he, he's definitely a, a master's lifter. I'll say that as not. He may well be 75. So way to go, be. Paul. Yeah. I thought we had a... <laughs> Travis said in the last video, one of Lee's answers is behind Alex. There you go. Yes. Yeah. That's true. That's what, your, that's what your fridge should look like, Lee. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm on the setup so far, so if you guys are ahead, go for uh, it. I'm, you just walked out of the rack for me. Okay. Yeah, I'm, I'm through rep one. Okay. Not horrible. I really don't mind these at all. Uh, all 75. Yeah. Um, I can't tell if those are lifters. Um, can you guys tell if those are lifters? No, I don't can... think they're nah, lifters. They're not. I think they they're like a, an athletic shoe that's like not mm -hmm. super squishy, but I don't think it's a dedicated lifter. Yeah. Yeah, I don't, I don't mind these at all. I think what I, what I would recommend is, you know, as you're approaching depth, think about the word bounce in your head as loud as you can. You know, have someone who can time it well or identifies depth near you, even if they're like, even if they clap, if they yell the word bounce, if they yell boing, anything like that. Rip has done that before. Um, to think about planning that, um, you are sinking into the bottom. You're almost pausing there momentarily and then deciding to come back up. You don't want that turnaround to be an intentional thing. You want to get so tight and so springy that you are popping out of the bottom. Um, so, you know, whatever you need to do, think about remembering that. Um, but uh, otherwise, I think these are I think these are good. Yeah. Um, what do you think about his elbows, Alex? Um, I think he needs to bring his elbows down a little bit just for longevity purposes. It seems like whenever he gets to the bottom of the squat, his elbows shoot up a little bit harder. Yeah, uh, I think I, th I think start from seeing him walk around, he's just a relatively kyphotic dude, so that may just kind of be a life support measure to keep the bar on your back. Yeah. Um, you know, so the other things that you know we always recommend they have a good video on it. Wear a thick cotton shirt. Make sure that that's you know friction isn't something that you have to deal with. Um, but I don't think it's super drastic. I don't think it's I don't think it's incredibly drastic. Um, yeah. You know, if you, if you do notice some sort of like shoulder tendinopathy popping up, I would revisit it. Um, but I don't think he's leading with his elbows at all. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but I, I like these. I like these. Keep lifting, man. Yeah, these are great. We're nitpicking, but yeah, <laughs> these are these are really good. <laughs> all right. Uh, thanks, Paul. Uh, a couple more comments. Uh, not from the haters. Ahmed. Oh. Okay. Ahmed's got another question. When reversing to put the bar down for the deadlift, how fast should I go? Uh, controlled descent. Just put it. What I what I think. What I tell people is just look down. If if you're having a hard time figuring out getting that bar straight back to your midfoot, so you're gonna have to roll it around. Just go ahead and take a peek down, and then push the bar down to the ground. Um, let it down hard. It, you're not gonna hurt anything. 
Um, you don't have to go slow. Um, just get the bar down as quick as you can, control it, and then have it in a good position to uh, set up for your next rep. Mm-hmm. Yeah, controlled fall. You don't need to throttle the descent. And if you're in an environment where you need to, like say you're using like iron plates on a concrete floor, you have no other options, then sure, you know. Um, but uh, in, in an ideal scenario, you don't need to throttle it at all. No. Yeah. yeah. Yep. Uh, Crown of Iron, our old mate uh, from before said, Masters footy games are one hour only and some tackles are forbidden. So I'm not totally insane. What tackles are forbidden? Okay, good. I can't imagine the what, forbidden tackles. Yeah, I mean, it doesn't sound like footy at all. Then it sounds like kick to kick. This is, sorry, this is, all, this is all Australian lingo. But anyway, all right, yeah, there we go. I have no idea what you're talking about. That's a shame. I like calling. Uh, I like calling it footy though. That's cool. That's and also, forbidden doing. tackles makes it sound that's very martial we, artsy. Is someone who's called rap footy for a long time? You're making it sound cool. It's a, it's a shame though, because I mean, I guarantee you, nobody else in Masters footy is uh, doing starting strength. You would absolutely destroy people, crown of iron, if you got your... Uh, mm-hmm. yeah. um, all right, next next up we have... Where are we up to? Uh, I think Stefan... I Stefan Anderson. Stefan Anderson. Yeah. Yeah. Old Stefo Anderson. Um, first things first for me, these look pretty high. Um, I don't think you're hitting depth. Um, of course, my again, my vision isn't the greatest right now, but I, I think these are high. Yeah, he's um, high. I just got through rep one. He's high. Okay, cool. Um, mm-hmm. Yeah, um, you're, you're driving your head up to keep your nose pointed down. Um, stay in your hips on the way up. Get a bit deeper. Um, I would take a little bit of weight off this bar because these, are, these seem challenging and you're squatting high. So I'd take a little bit of weight off the bar. Get your hips a little bit lower. You want the crease of your hip below the top of your knee and then drive your hips up. The form itself doesn't look too terrible to me, um, but those are the main things that I, I would focus on. Yeah, so your, uh, Stefan, your toe angle is asymmetrical. So your left toe is more severely turned out than your right toe. Um, think about pulling your right heel in, and then your goal is to shove your knees out hard enough to clear enough space for your stomach to drop down to the floor. Um, right now, you're turning it around when your belt or when your stomach is touching your thigh. You need to make the choice to actively let those touch each other and compress and ride it down another two to three inches. Um, you may not need any adjustments outside of like aggressive in-person coaching to kind of jam you into the position. Um, but if you're doing this by yourself, you know, take a lot of videos, watch them in between the set. Um, what you're looking for is to start to feel what depth is like, and then you can visually identify that and you just can kind of create that loop back and forth so that you can you can get that sorted out. Um, but I think the mechanics are good here. You're just deciding to stop early. Um, so shove the knees out, rotate your whole thigh out and think about shoving your belly down to the floor. Um, push your belt buckle down even farther. Uh, it will run into you. You will run into yourself, your stomach and your thighs are going to run into each other, but you just have to keep pushing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Thanks very much, Stefan. Uh, strong Moomin deadlift. What a good name. <laughs> yeah, thank your parents for naming you first name strong, <laughs> last name means, Lumen. I'm, I think his name means strong in Arabic. Eric, is his name double strong then? Is it strong strong? <laughs> strong strong. <laughs> Even cooler parents, yes. Um, oh, that's a good deadly face. I like it. Yeah, and... I'm mm. willing to bet he's not setting his back at all. It's really hard to tell from this, but I don't think he's setting his back at all. I think his back is pretty rounded. Um, yeah. Okay, yeah, so I'm not just seeing things. Um, no, normally you'll be able to, from this front kind of Instagram-y angle, you'll be able to tell like some shading things happening yeah. with where his stomach is to see if he's setting his back. I do not think you're setting your back. Strong shot. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so when you get when you get down into that bottom position, you need to think about keeping your hips high, squeezing your chest up, and pushing your belly button between your legs as hard as you can. That will push your back into flat extension, and then you can start driving the bar up by pushing your feet straight down. Make the bar heavy in your hands as you're setting your chest and back, and that will help get that weight up a lot easier. And, and it'll also protect your back. Now you don't want to you don't want to make a habit of lifting with a rounded back. Um, you're less likely to hurt yourself rather than overextension, but um, without setting your back at all, you still don't have that much protection. You could hurt yourself. Mm-hmm. 
Yeah, it's inconsistent. And essentially, you know, mm-hmm. like if you're not necessarily trained for the position, it's it's not going to be great. Um, yeah. But uh, so start filming yourself from not straight on to the side, but think like a rear 45 degree angle. So if you put the camera near where that outlet is, like a foot behind that outlet near the plate tree, that would be a really good place to put the camera. Um, and what you're going to think about, you know, like Rusty said, squeezing your chest up, pushing your stomach down in between your thighs and shoving your hips up. Think about making your spine as long and straight as possible. Um, so like we said with the last guy, just play around with 135, take a video, do four or five reps, watch it immediately after, do that for like 45 minutes, figure out how to set your back. Um, Alex Mitchell had a good one about learning how to twerk. So like starting kind of in this half deadlift position, putting your hands on your thighs and then trying to shove your stomach in and out and in and out, pop your butt out. Um, you know, if that's not working, look up like the Superman hold or the gymnastics uh, arch body until you can kind of get a good burn going in your lower back. That way you can replicate it. Um, and then once you finish your deadlifts, look a little bit more enthused about you doing a really good job. You look pretty, <laughs> you look pretty kind of Eeyore like at the end of these. So get a little hyped up, get a little bit more psyched for your work because you're doing a good and, job. Uh, so. Yeah, and if you send in another video to us, um, film it from the side. Don't film it from the front. It's um, a lot ho- harder to coach when you're looking straight up, straight forward at a deadlift. Um, mm-hmm. So get it towards the side, okay? All right. Thank you very much, Strong Strong. Um, Steve A. Rogers has a question. Wife has been training, but she has patella bursitis in her left knee that bothers her. Any experience with dealing with this when training? Um, Um, yes, actually. Yeah. Go for it, Rusty. I'll go then. Yeah. Um, I've had, um, um, particularly a, um, a, one of my youth lifters, he, he started getting bad, um, patella tendonitis in uh, both knees. Actually, it was, um, he has a he had a bad habit of his knees shoving in. We eventually fixed it, but uh, box squats really helped him quite a bit. Um, we actually have a video on um, on uh, the YouTube channel on how to properly box squat. Um, that will help you out if you watch that video. But um, whenever I threw him on box squats, we were on it for a little bit and we had to do a pretty big deload. Um, but whenever we started cruising with those box squats, his knee pain started going away. Hmm. Um, yeah, so I've noticed that, you know, kind of just like a, a patellar, uh, tendonitis, um, it functions a little bit differently than bursitis will, or at least kind of in recovery or in flare ups. Um, tendinopathy is a thing where it's like, whether you're doing a stairmaster, a squat, getting up out of a chair, getting off the toilet, it's something that you'll almost be constantly reminded of. Bursitis kind of seems to be an on off thing, or at least the experience that I've had. Um, a lot of grapplers will have it just from like impact injuries on their knee, and then it will just swell up with fluid whenever it actually is aggravated. Um, so essentially what you're looking for is to find a tolerable range of motion, increase loading on that, and then every once in a while try to trade off that loading for more range of motion. So remember the criteria that we're working on, you know, uh, most weight, most range of motion, most muscle mass. So if you can do a box squat, take that box squat from 95 to 115, and then try and take the box down two inches and then go back to say 95 or 100. That's a great move and just kind of keep like taking two steps forward, one step back, two steps forward, one step back, try and get that range of motion back. Um, But uh, essentially what your goal is, is to not make her sensitive to the squat. Um, So if you want to start with like full range of motion, ass to grass squats, and it's aggravating the bursitis reliably, change the movement pattern until the knee's not sensitive anymore. You can switch to a leg press. You can switch to whatever is not going to be, make it cranky, um, and then go back to it. So what, what you want to avoid is just kind of uh, making that squat a bad experience um, and making that squat something that aggravates the bursitis more than it has to. But, you know, make sure that you're keeping everything controlled, keeping everything slow, avoiding sharp dynamic movements. Um, but it seems to be one that if you can get over it, it doesn't. it's not too persistent of a problem. Mm. You know, yeah, and, and then box squats will slow you down. Will stop the balance out of the out of the bottom, so protect your knees a little bit more. You can get your hips back a lot harder. Keep your knee or your shins a little more vertical, which moves a lot of that moment onto your hips. So, um, mm-hmm. yeah, I would I would definitely try the uh, try box squats before uh, anything else. Mm. And twerking, mm-hmm. I think. Uh, and twerking, and twerking. Yeah, definitely. Yes. That's not twerking. Um, Jason Kelly has a comment. The twerking demo was surprisingly helpful for setting my back for deadlift. <laughs> there you go. Oh, I must have missed this one. I need to go and find it. Yeah, it was, it was, it was the, the episode Mitchell where one. you went there. <laughs> mm-hmm. <Yes>. Yeah. <laughs> uh, righto. Uh, geez, I might have. Uh, is it Sun, Il- Sun Ilm who's next? 
Sunil M27. Sunil M27. I hope he's putting in that he's a male. He's a 27-year-old male. (laughs) He's got an epic beard going on there as well. Wow. He does. Uh, He had a few comments as well with his video. He said, looking at the video, I feel like I'm not locking out my knees, but it felt like (laughs) I was fully extended when I was pulling. Can you help me figure this out? I'm pulling 230 pounds here, which is my current max. Yeah. Um, You're not giving yourself enough time to get in full extension because you're just rocketing through these things, man. Um, this is obviously too light for you or you wouldn't be able to just pick it up and put it down over and over again. You're doing a CrossFit style, um, deadlift where, you know, touch and goes basically. Um, it's really hard to maintain good form doing touch and goes. Um, so I, you need to start putting more weight on, start taking your time between each rep, make sure you are set and get in a full lockout position. But with how, with how you could probably clean this weight with how, how quick you're moving it. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, you need, to, you need to up the weight on this quite a bit. You need to focus on your setup. Don't quit doing touch and goes. It's not helping you get stronger. Um, Alex might have a different opinion on, on that than me. I don't know. <laughs> um, yeah, so, you, so you'll see it on the first rep. Um, and I think uh, I th- I, someone said it. I'm pretty oh. sure it was, it was Rusty or Rusty was quoting somebody else. But, you know, you have a few options. The, the pull can feel bad or the setup can feel bad. Yeah. Right now, you're like wincing pretty severely before rep one even goes, and then the bar it's it's behaving like it's it's 50 pounds for you. You know, there's mm-hmm. this is an incredibly fast deadlift, and it's not actually that hard or slow for you. So your your kind of sense of difficulty and calibration may be off there. So yeah. take a second, watch it, realize it's fast, realize you know you can calm down a little bit on the setup. Um, treat them like five consecutive single reps. So each time you're going to do it, you're going to run through the five-step setup precisely. Um, I wouldn't say that, you know, taking your next deadlift workout at 255 and literally doing five singles immediately after each other um, wouldn't be a bad idea. You know, just take your, do a perfect rep, take one step back, one step forward, go again. Um, I completely agree with that. I think that would definitely help him out. Yeah. Yeah. So essentially kind of what you need to do is slow down. So whenever you get set up, you can pull the hell out of the bar, pull it as fast as you possibly can always, but just don't rush that setup. So understand that those are two distinct phases between the setup and the actual pull. Um, so I would just watch the rewatch the five step videos, try and get that to happen. And if you do have like flat shoes that aren't kind of the foamy ones that you have, like a Vans or a Converse, try those. Um, or even just deadlifting in socks is better than, you know, the, uh, the big bouncy moon shoes that you have on now. Um, but otherwise, you know, redo your five steps, slow everything down, do five singles. Yeah. And you know, the thing, uh, I'm going to go back to the weight too. I mean, this weight is way too light. If you can do this with this weight, you're not getting stronger from it. So you have to start challenging deadlifts have to be hard for you to get stronger off them. Um, so you need to start put whenever you get to where you can calm down do each rep, like Alex said, um, like five singles, uh, make sure you are set and tight on every single one, do the five steps. We have plenty of videos you can watch to make sure you're doing the five steps correctly. Um, that weight should feel heavy and it should be very hard. Every rep should be pretty, pretty hard. So, um, revisit all that and, um, get back to us after you, uh, fix that stuff. Mm -hmm. Yep. All right. Thanks very much. Uh, Thomas Harris. Oh man, what a title. <laughs> yeah, it is a pretty good. It's everything you need to know about this squat is in the title of the video. <laughs> All right. Thomas Harris, 80 kilos, 303 <laughs> tempo, time 10 at RPE 7. <laughs> um, Still holding these line. back too much. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So this is we've had Thomas on. I want to say two other times. Yeah, so yeah we have. And yeah. I think he was holding his knees back last time we had him. Yes, yeah. Holding your knees back was the problem on either yeah. of those. And this yeah. is not RPE seven. Just no. uh, for the record, <laughs> uh, I don't know. I'm only. A, this is like yeah. RPE four, <laughs> I think. Yeah, yeah. He, he, he's he's making these hard by holding his knees back too much. Bend your knees, man. That that needs to be the first thought that goes through your brain. I need to push my knees to my toes, and then I can stop them. That will make all of this so much easier. We tell everybody you want to bend over more than you want to, but the goal isn't to bend over. The goal is to squat the weight correctly. So get your knees out a little bit further and then start to squat. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So whenever you just as a note, you know, if anybody's using RP out there, um, it is very difficult to gauge on 
higher up sets for one, and it's more difficult to gauge on these odd variations because there's a huge skill component to it. You don't actually know how kind of far you can take that muscular fatigue if you're doing like three zero three tempos. Um, and like RPE seven, if we're saying, you know, like, yeah, I had that for two more clean reps. You don't know if you had that. You don't know if you had 12 in you or 13 in you or 14 in you. Um, so, you know, it may have a relatively limited mm. utility for you at this stage in the game, considering you're only squatting 80 kilos. Um, just in terms of coaching, if all of the stuff that we're saying about blasting your knees forward is not working, you need to find a variation that demands that your knees go forward or you fail the squat. Um, you know, so in the shortest way I would fix this would just say front squat. You know, if you hold your knees back, you will not get to depth and the bar will fall off of your shelf, fall off your front rack. Um, so try front squat. It'll teach you the correct knee position because it will have to go there or you will entirely fail the movement. Um, and then try and apply that knee position to your low bar. Um, okay. but yeah, you're definitely holding the knees back a little bit too far. I think the stance may be a little bit too narrow, but that's not really the primary issue right now. Um, and then, you know. You I can always just, tubo it as well. Exactly, yeah. I think, yeah, I, I, do, I don't know if he's working out solo or not, because I think these have yeah. always been the static camera angle, um, you know, so. Yeah, well, know. you know, in the, uh, in the, don't get me wrong, I, I believe you have to have heavy weight on the bar to fix these problems, because anybody can manhandle lightweight, but mm -hmm. um, I've, in the past, I've set up a, a block, and I've walked myself in, in behind the block. Yeah. So I mean, it's it's not impossible to do by yourself. It's just kind of hard. Um, and you know, I would not want to do it with you know, if you're going for a one <laughs> one set of five, I would not be trying to do it. Um, but um, definitely, um, I would I would experiment with it for sure. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Tubo, invite a friend over, or be brave and kind of walk at that walk around it. Basically, mm -hmm. that's what you'll have to do. And you so. can just do it on all of your warm ups until you get to your work set. Mm -hmm. um, you know that your warm ups should feel pretty safe in doing all of that. Yeah. Yep. yep. Uh, a few comments. Travis Reed, uh, Rip Voice RPE is bullshit. Okay. I completely <laughs> agree with that. That's one thing I was going to touch on. Um, yeah, I think I, I I would not rely on RPE. Um, you know, the thing about it is, is you know, especially whenever programming is built around RPE, you know, they say, well, you can't go over RPE seven or RPE eight. Well that means you're just giving yourself permission to bitch out of the way if it feels heavy that day. Um, I mean, I can't tell you how many times I've gotten in a bar and I'm like, this, there's no way this is happening today. And I still got it all. So I, I wouldn't, I would not rely on RPE for, for anything other, maybe after the lift is over being like, Oh, that felt like an RP seven or eight, but you, it should not be dictating your training at all. Yeah. Think about it like a communication tool. You know, yeah. so like yes. if you're if you're if you're doing your own programming and then you're noticing that like let's say you're even on the LP and then you're like okay and, and frankly I don't really like the RP I like reps in reserve or pounds in reserve is a much more colloquial understandable system where if you're just like yeah I had one rep left in the tank I had ten I could have put ten more pounds on the bar there um, just jot those things down in your notebook you know like more details are not going to hurt you at any point um, that way you can tell like if across the weeks. If every single time you're like, I had absolutely nothing left in me and you can kind of keep that trend up for three weeks and you're like, man, I'm getting back pain now. I'm getting knee pain now. I can't really sleep. My appetite's gone down. You know, you can use that description, that qualitative stuff to make programming decisions. Um, but if you're still relatively new to lifting, don't use it as like a prescription tool. I don't think, you know, mm -hmm. don't be like, all right, I'm going to go in and work up to an RPE seven whenever, you know, you've been lifting for three months. So, yeah. Mm -hmm. And, you know, another thing about RPE, you know, people who tend to do more manual labor jobs who are used to hard things, that their um, perception of what an RPE is is going to be completely different than somebody who's worked a desk job their whole life. Yep. So, so you know, they might be at a RPE 9, but they keep convincing themselves, oh, this is 6, this is 7, this is 6, this is 7, whenever they're getting really close to failing a rep. Versus somebody who's, you know, been at a desk job their whole life, you know, something might get a tad bit grindy and they're like, there's no way I can do any more. That was an RPE nine. You know, it's just it's just not a reliable source of information. Yeah, I think that's the utility of having the coach. You know, you're adding yes. another layer of kind of information verification. And it's really easy to trick yourself, you know, if you're just working by yourself. Uh, really, every wrestler and grappler that I've worked with. A, a lift will look like it's RPE 11. It will look like they're going to die. And they'll be like, yeah, that was fine. You know, <laughs> yeah. um, exactly. 
Whereas other people, you know, if, as soon as it starts to get a little bit slow, it slows down, you know, 10% off of rep one and a five rep set. And they'll be like, there was nothing else. There was, <laughs> there was nothing else in the tank, you know? So yeah, um, I've had yeah. clients like that. Definitely. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Get a coach that way you can essentially have that. You can outsource your thinking and then uh, you can verify that information off. So yeah, yep, definitely. Uh, more comments. Crown of Iron. He said, hey guys, I'm Paul 75. Feedback much hey, appreciated. Paul 75. And he mm-hmm. said, he said, LOL, 75 was my year of birth. <laughs> uh-huh. <laughs> Not his age, so uh, sorry, Paul. Paul, <laughs> well, 75. I'd say he looks pretty good for 75. Look, Rusty's, <laughs> Rusty's just had laser eye surgery. He's still recovering all right, so. Uh, <laughs> yeah, Rusty had laser eye surgery, and I'm very judgmental, so. <laughs> I'm very mean. So, yeah. uh, uh, Sunil M., who we looked at his deadlift before, uh, he said, wow, this is really helpful. Thanks. Did not realize I was too fast. I've been thinking about canvas shoes. Here I was thinking this was very hard already. Thanks for the comments. Mm-hmm. Yeah, go watch some go watch some powerlifting meets and you'll see very hard deadlifts taken to a, a, a hell of a grind. You yeah. know? Um, just watch like some record lifts and you'll be like, oh, a deadlift can take seven seconds. All of your deadlifts shouldn't take seven seconds, but you know, you'll notice the discrepancy in difficulty. Yep. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, Paul75 said his shoes are CrossFit Nanos. So there you go. Nanos. Very cool. Yes. All mm-hmm. right. Who we got next? Uh, is it Who828? I think is the next one. Who828. Yep. I think this is our last video. So uh... they were born in the year 820. <laughs> BC. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> First thing that's funny to me is this uh, this picture in the background. Yeah, of, I was looking at that too. <laughs> of this, oh, it's hard of this not young to. lady who has like. Those are 10 pounds on each side. So she's probably squatting 85 and everybody's screaming at her. And I'm pretty sure she's smiling in the bottom of that squat. She's definitely, it's either a at smaller least her knees are out. That's RP7, Rusty. That's an RP7. <laughs> That's an RP7 face. <laughs> <laughs> and there's that one guy who's really stoked about her lift. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it's a team sport. It's a team sport. She can't get it. All right. Much. All right. Who? A28. Um, so widen your stance up, increase your toe angle a little bit. Your toes are basically straight far forward. Um, this, that configuration that you'll have will work for like a front squat. It's not really going to work for a low bar squat where mm-hmm. you have to pitch everything out. Um, widen the stance about two inches, uh, point your toes out probably about another inch on each side and then shove your knees out so that your thighs run in line, uh, with your feet. I think just solving that stance will solve the depth issue and we'll solve everything else. Yeah. Um, that would probably self-correct most things. And the next thing is that don't squat back into the rack on rep five. So whenever you have like some more reds on here, if you try to do rep five and squat into the rack, you know, kind of push in diagonally, um, it's not going to be fun for anybody. So squat, yeah. lock it out, wait till the bar is done moving. And then, you know, take one, two step back to the rack. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Alex hit everything on the head. Um, uh, watch your elbows too. You're dropping them very, very hard. Um, Whenever that weight gets heavier, if you drop your elbows like that, you're, you're going to start experiencing some pains. So, so um, keep your elbows up and tight. Keep a hard back. If your elbows are dropping that much, that means your your back is probably relaxing a little bit. So keep that big chest, and then uh, do everything else Alex said, and you'll probably your lips will probably be better and lock out that last rep. It's always dangerous to to squat into the into the hooks. Overall, this is a very coordinated gym outfit. Because yeah. <laughs> we have the yellow on the heel, and then the yellow oh, yeah. on the shorts, and then you know the shirt yeah. matches everything. Really, this is yeah, way to go. Yeah. Real points. If for he that. was if he was going to get a a, um, a headband, what do they call it? A little what do they call it? a scarf? Like you had the other week. What 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 color would you recommend, Alex? It would oh, be blue and white. Yeah, I would. I would say yeah. If you can do blue, white, and yellow, just kind of like a Chargers logo, uh, yeah. that would be good. Nice. That'd yeah, because yeah. that seems to be the theme for all of this. <laughs> yeah. What if he has an outfit for every day of the week? That'd be great. Mm-hmm. Different color scheme every day of the week. I do, Rusty. I don't know. <laughs> I, I know you do. <laughs> <laughs> you can tell we've gone over time because we've basically just totally ignored this guy's squat now. <laughs> <laughs> An assortment of tank tops. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Any other feedback for uh, who eight twenty eight? He actually said he's been getting back to squat after five months break. So, good work, buddy. That's um, well, yeah. Don't ever take mm-hmm. five months off again. Well, he might have might not have been his choice. Um, well, 
you know what? There's yeah, a start to- looking for home gym equipment as uh, yeah. as the market rebounds. Definitely. That's all I can say. Yeah, yeah definitely. Uh, we've got one last comment from Travis again. Great work, fellas. Thanks for doing this every week. Catch you next Monday. Absolutely, man. See ya. No worries, Thanks. Travis. All right, guys. Thanks for that. I think that's... Is that all of them? I think we got through, got through all of them. Yep. Yeah. It is. Um, where can people find you, Alex, if they want to argue with you about clothes or RPE or... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. or if, you wanna, if you want to talk about a hype beast streetwear with me, um, <laughs> we'll put, a, we'll put a, a website link in the description below. Drop me an email. Um, and I do do online coaching. You know, So if you want to argue about the, the finer nuances of programming with me, uh, hit me up for that. Uh, where can we find you at, Rusty? Uh, Rust underscore strength underscore training underscore uh, yeah probably there's probably another <laughs> underscore <now>. twink <laughs> yeah <laughs> 94 <laughs> all right thanks a lot fellas that's gonna be the only way to get a hold of me and i probably won't respond yeah <laughs> unless you're a girl <laughs> he'll not. respond if you're a girl that's uh yeah i definitely will <laughs> Yeah, I need, I need somebody to make me honest <laughs> <laughs> all right thanks a lot fellas we'll uh, catch you next week all right thanks, see you guys, guys. Yeah.